I'd like to extend the conversation to the audience. Um, please use the mic so that everybody can hear. I'd rather not walk around like Oprah, uh, which is dating me. Some people are like, who's Oprah? Um, but if you could maybe ask your question. We'll take three questions at a time. And, um, and then we'll start with uh, James, uh, Wei Yi, and Julius. What's your biggest regret? Yeah. Since you came out of jail, I mean, maybe you have some regrets before then, but your biggest regret, your biggest academic regret. Okay. Then we, yeah. <laughs> Hello, yes, uh, I'm Wei Yi and uh, I'm a graduate student here. Um, I was just reminded of a term that Roger Silverstone used in his book. He quotes somebody else. It's called the texture, the texture of experience. And, and this concept, I think, is pretty useful in light of what you described because what's the function of history in society? So it's not to you know, fulfill a, a, a bullet point list, you know, but to become maybe the dye you know, that colors the texture of our experience in our society. You know? So maybe that's a way of looking at it. But having said that, then we come back to the problem that I think uh, plagues. I mean, you come from Wisconsin, you know, and of course in Asia, you describe how even when you were a graduate student, you had a, an academic environment that required very neoliberal um, targets, you know. And now, of course, even in America, even in those safe sanctuaries, you know, like Wisconsin, you know, Cornell, it's also encroaching to that, you know. And then we still have an Asia that's still like what it was more or less when you were a graduate student. And it's not reformed, you know, and now we've got this disease spreading out even to the sanctuaries in the West, you know. So how are we going to push our universities in Asia to look at it, you know, to, to build universities that do this, you know, to let historians influence the texture of experience rather than to fulfill bullet points or uh, development agenda? Because I come from Malaysia and every thesis is supposed to have a section on policy contribution. You know, uh -huh. I don't know what I'm going to contribute. Thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm Julius from Kyoto. Tong Chai, what is the contents of chapter 8? <laughs> okay. Um, Tong Chai, you want to start with? Biggest regret. I almost have biggest regret. But I have to say, maybe you asked me the wrong time or right time, and now I don't have that anymore. I tried to struggle with this book for years. It's my life mission to the point that I almost lost my confidence I can finish another book. I'm almost forgive, I mean, not forgive, give up the idea of trying to finish a book. Then I decide, long process, but let's say up to, up to I decide to, you can say that I, I, I know that I retire a bit early because I want to finish a book. So, and I did finish. So I have to say that um, the moment I talk to <laughs> three colleagues, they, I, I'm at peace. Um, yeah, whether or not the book is well received, I don't care. What are the audience, what do you think? It's up to the future. Up to a certain point, people ask me, now in advance, can I, they ask me to translate. I told them, read it in time. Read it first. You know that you don't want to translate. So let's say whatever consequence, I, I'm ready. I don't even care. Uh, so biggest regret right now, of course, I have a lot of things that I, I cannot fulfill, but uh, I mean, how to say, at peace, partly because I, there are a lot of things that I give up, a lot of things that I know I can't. I'm not a good teacher. I'm decent. I can, I can, I can teach. You, you have an evaluation, right? We have a few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My evaluation never go way beyond the means. Or never go way below the means. <laughs> that time I survived, <laughs> uh, and I I I became the the teacher that I.
gossip when I was in undergrad. Uh, the teacher teaching the same old stuff. <laughs> uh, of course, I have reason for myself, but let's say uh, if, if students uh, told me that, of, I don't complain. I don't complain, I know my limit. So when part of it, back to part of it to that question, everywhere now, turn university, especially humanities, into kind of basic service. I disagree, I understand, but I disagree. That helped me make decision to quit because they're going to increase the teaching load, increase the class size. Budget-wise, bureaucratic-wise, I understand, but I can say that it doesn't fit me or the other way around. I don't fit that kind of university. So it's easy, I want to finish a book. Teaching took too much time for me because English, whenever I teach, it's too hard to write anything. So the only thing, and since they go in Wisconsin to move toward more bigger undergrad class, toward more, and I don't mean to underestimate, to, 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 to undervalue undergraduate education, it's just me. So you can say that I was, I grew up early, which is good. Otherwise, if I grew up right now, I would be, have more trouble. Or you can say it's both positive and negative. Let's say I, I don't quite fit the demand for undergrad teaching. Again, I still believe that I can teach. But if you look for a stellar teacher who get teaching award, that's not me. And, but it's not a regret because I, all, all the time, every year, I just keep, I just try to survive. <laughs> teaching uh, good enough that uh, uh, I mean, don't get the two. And otherwise, uh, other thing, other regret, no, politics-wise, I don't regret. I mean, don't regret in the sense of my uh, failure of, of, of my inability. Then if talking about regret otherwise, I mean, uh, like regret about Thailand, regret about that's a lot. There are a lot of things, but uh, not, not because of me. So for me, finishing this book is my life mission. I finished then. Whether or not the book is well received, I, I feel like, it, almost like uh, you say, it, it, it's not academic. When uh, I wrote this as a, it's like when you put something to worship the dead. You care the dead come to eat the things you, no, you don't care, right? <laughs> you don't care. You fulfill your own, that town, I feel. About university, I, I understand why, especially in the U.S., undergrad in the U.S. Is, is, is not good. Because of all reasons, including they try to democratize so much, which is good, but at the same time, something to compromise. Uh, that's to make it long, to make it short. That's a philosophy different from uh, of, of high education, purpose, and politics, whatever, from Singapore, UK, Australia, Thailand, it's different, totally different. So the reason for the relatively poor quality undergrad in the US, I understand, and in fact, I support it. I would agree that, hey, that's public education, that's the way it should be. Even they have to compromise the quality a bit in order to put the students in the college a few more years. I think that's great. <laughs> the thing that beat the purpose of the U.S. is the price. It's the cost of college now is beating their own purpose. It's bad. But let's say, try to compare with other places where university is more selective for a few. You see, it's, it's different. The output, the, the whole, in fact, the whole, different, different countries, the whole system is, is similar, but different ways to work out. So when they try to make the undergrad education more important, more like the, all I can complain, all I can say, not complain, not even complain, all I can say that I don't fit that system. I don't fit that purpose. 
because I still want to write. I want to think. So I, I don't even blame the... Of course, there's something to blame. There's something to comment. But let's say, in the big picture, I don't even blame the, the attempt to try to democratize, to try to expand undergrad education. It's a dilemma of every education system. And I, I don't have a magic things to explain that they should do this or that way. I don't have. I'm, I'm not expert. Just, just understand that. And, and know that I'm, I don't fit them, I don't fit them, I get myself out. What is chapter eight? I told you already, chapter eight is about transformation of history, which doesn't fit geography. But that showed the direction that I want to go. I want to do more about transformation to modernity, beyond history. That's why I have to, I should take that out, then do a separate project. That becomes two or three articles in already in English on history. Like uh, Gosara Gulab the, the, is part of that chapter eight. Uh, I took it out, I thought about it all the time. And uh, I wrote another entire novel in English about plot of the uh, Royal Chronicles. I, I put, I turned into Thai years ago, but not the English. Other questions, gentlemen? Hello. Um, I, I have a question about how you would position yourself ideologically, uh, because I was struck by how you, you, you mentioned that your early encounters with books had, you know, were intimately connected to your, uh, to your activism and to your, uh, uh, to your Marxism. Um, but then, and subsequently, you, you, you took on, uh, you, you read uh, Braudel, you read post-structuralism, uh, you encountered different, different, different forms of Marxism. So I, I, I'm just curious how you would describe yourself intellectually or ideologically. Would you consider yourself a Marxist, or are you much more eclectic uh, than that? Two other questions? Sure, Jack. Hi, uh, Professor Dong Chai. Yeah, uh, I, I wonder if you can tell us a bit more about your experience serving as the president of AAS. And especially, I remember the keynote lecture that you delivered, which is, if I remember correctly, was on Asian studies and area studies. So I, I was just curious what, like, what inspired you to deliver you know, that, that uh, presidential address. Thank you. One more for this round? Sure. Okay, yeah, thank you. Um, I'm curious about um, your uh, current conversations with uh, Thai students from, for example, Tamasat University. Is there a kind of anticipation concerning your book? Um, how do um, students in Thailand uh, kind of think about this project? Are they excited or maybe also a little bit scared? What Atyan Tong Chai will write in this book? Ideologically, I abandoned Marxism for a long time ago, but not bitter divorce, no. <laughs> no, not bitter divorce, in the sense that I, I owe to them a lot as my foundation. Uh, without it, I, I, I doubt very much I understand many things subsequently. Do I have the political or, let's say, uh, idealistic and idealistic? I, I mean, I, I, my idealism still in a Marxist frame? No. No more. No more. Uh, maybe like many other people of current generation, if you look back at Marxism, it's still, I think it's funny. <laughs> it, it's a bit absurd. but. So sophisticated absurdity. Uh, that and and my 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 take on that, I would take more sophistication rather than absurdity. I like that. I like that it, it's so serious. It's so complex. It's so I don't know. So thoughtful. I take that rather than the part that we don't like. What am I? I don't know. Liberal, normal. Uh, I'm not even sure I'm pragmatic. Living double life, not only Thai and Western, activist and scholar, 
pragmatic and I don't know what else. I, I think, by the way, I, 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 I kind of, I don't know myself from the beginning, no, no, but later in life, I, I think I know myself that way. I mean, manage the, the paradoxical position. And uh, I, I won't say easy, I won't say easy, uh, happily, but let's say I, I find that for me it's un unavoidable. So what am I? One thing, put it this way, one thing I love my colleague at Wisconsin, I believe that it's, it's more historians in many other places like this. I assume, I don't know much, but I, my interaction with people from other places, uh, they are like this too. They're skeptic. Skeptic who, not biologic, have to be skeptical with everything. No, no, they live a normal life, but skeptic. Uh, that that's a, that impressed me a lot, by the way, in the first instance that I know Wisconsin, because the, my co the colleague that interviewed me, recruit me, I got it quite quickly that, wow, they're so different from my history colleague in Thailand. A few of them I would say I would call skeptic or maybe none. Uh, they are critical, but not skeptic, but most of them are just uh, public servants who are nationalistic. In, in Wisconsin, later I learned many of them, they are both Republican and Democrat. My historian colleague, not true that they are all Democrat, but one common qualification, they are all skeptic. Yeah. And one last thing that I love, maybe this is part of American or not, they're skeptical to many things up to a certain point in conversation, they usually end up mocking at themselves. I like that very much. I, I don't mean everybody can do, I don't mean I can do. I think that, that's a good spirit of skepticism. And that's how they return to normal life. They're skeptical, 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 up to a certain point. They know that the skepticism is also dangerous. The skepticism has a kind of, kind, not dangerous, what's the word, a kind of self-defeating. It's self-defeating. So they have to live a normal life. And uh, yeah, I, I learned a good friend of mine, in fact, he's a Republican. But he's not stupid Republican, he's not Trump Republican, no, no way. He's not Trump Republican. But let's say he's skeptical, skeptical, skeptical. I, and I, sometimes I, I even think, wow, there, why there is no conservative like that in Thailand? Conservative in Thailand use too much power, so they don't need to develop intellectualism. So they are so stupid and use power. In the place where it's not guaranteed that you can have or you can use power, intellectual, you have to develop it. That's why many, many of my friends in Wisconsin, I know them as a good conservative, very, very smart. I, that's what I love. That, I'm not sure that's me or not. I have, how I can say that, that influence me a lot. To be that kind of skeptic, to be, to be able to question, but, but at the same time, my two feet still on the ground, because we have to live. I have kids, I have life, I have house, I have, right? So those are the kind of things that you manage. Asian studies, area studies, I think that's the moment when Asia is on the rise. Not that, this, this is also still in that moment, but let's say not in the 90s. Only in late 90s, early 2000s, Asia is on the rise. I can see the Asian studies that belong to, basically to the American, Euro-American world, look at us, has changed. That's how I start thinking seriously, Asian studies have changed, will change. We have to figure out Asian studies in a new way. And I don't think anybody would be kind of, uh, how to say, not, it, it's not just one person task, no. We just keep doing, keep doing, keep struggling. We, I hope that at the time, I, even me, I normally you know that for me, I, I said already, my, the kind of work is supposed to be useless. I know that Asian studies in Asia in most places are policy oriented. 
I accept that it has to be that way. We don't have to deny. As long as they don't wipe us out, <laughs> as long as they give us some some space, we are just like a sec second, second, second tier, second fiddle. I can live with that. Depends. But 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 let's say a significant second fiddle is is good. Uh, if if in Asia they want development, they want policy. I think that's that's a world is. I don't I, I don't like. I don't like that, but at the same time, I can live with that. Is uh, again, I think we need to have some idealism. We need to have some aspiration. At the same time, we need to be realistic. So that talk is basically part of. They, they didn't require that uh, address of the presidential address has to be remarkable. No, no they said whatever we think, we have the privilege. The floor is for us. So I just want to talk about Asian studies have changed. Asian studies will change. And this is the new Asian studies. Asia, that has to be Asian studies with Asia play an important part. So the study of one center to the otherness, which happened to be in Asia, is over. Then in Asia, is that the Asia that we, I like anything Asia is correct? No. Keep in mind that one part of the address is that a most place of Asian higher education is colonial education. Colonial education is relatively weak in humanities. Colonial education is what I hate. <laughs> you need to be in liberal art. You need to be in that kind of environment. Asians, uh, 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 colonial education in Asia mostly weak in liberal arts. Because development of higher education under colonial or education is that it divorced from local indigenous so-called humanities. Like knowledge from the Wat, from the temple in Thailand, divorced, separate from humanities in the, uh, uh, and I'm not sure it's too late to, 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 to remarry it, maybe too late. But, but I say divorce means it didn't develop together. It, if it developed together, maybe conservative humanities, I don't know. But what I see is that it, it didn't develop together. It's kind of divorced. So that's why it makes uh, humanities in, 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 in most places in Asia uh, out of touch. Out of touch. But I enjoy that kind of out of touch, by the way. But I see the downside. I see the downside. I don't know. I'm not sure it could remarried with uh, local indigenous knowledge or how to, but let's say I think it has to change. Humanities need to be strengthened in, 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 in Asia. Doesn't have to be, but I don't mind either to, to follow some example from the, from the West. But let's say have to strengthen humanities, don't mind policy oriented but somehow how to make policy oriented, make them realize that they cannot live without humanities, that kind of thing. I'm not the kind of ed, uh, ed, what, a academic administrator who can uh, translate that into budget item. I, I have no idea. <laughs> but see, I, I, maybe it's just a thinker. Just, no, I'm not sure who am I, but listen, that's what I think. I still keep thinking along that line that Asian studies, every studies in Asia have to find their own identities. And the ground, the condition is ripe. But what is that, how to develop? I, I, I'm not good enough. After writing a few articles, I always go back to my transformation to modernity <laughs> because I, in the end I'm not, I mean, the care about education, yes, I do care, but let's say it's not my top priority. What else? Communication. More students in Thailand know me, early generation up to recent generation, know me as an uh, activist. The good thing is that in later generation, that's how my book can be translated and my book can sell, because they no longer have memory of me as an activist. <laughs> they grew up know me as a historian already. So that's how I, at least I can write something and they read. <laughs> Earlier generation is hard. It's hard. Ever, my history colleague, I think, is too late. I mean, they look at me more as an activist. Of course, 
they didn't turn their eyes blind. They know it. They know it. But let's say, still, the approach, the first acquaintance is more like a old friend who activists who happen to do this. So it's, it, that's why, I mean, the double life in the U.S., I enjoy something. And in a way, uh, the other thing to add in the U.S., I, in Thailand, I'm not a celebrity that I cannot walk, that I cannot walk in the street without people coming for handshake or throw things, throw eggs at me. No, 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 I'm not that, that famous. But still, a bit too much. It means you lost your privacy. In the U.S., I love to be nobody. It's my dream to be nobody. I can walk. I can do anything in grocery. I can do anything. Nobody cares. Nobody recognizes me. That in Thailand, a bit, you see, doesn't mean that I enjoy. No, I don't. I don't enjoy. We have time for a final round of questions, probably. Yeah, sh sure, Simon. Yeah. You want me to go first, or you want to wait? Um, good to see you, Tong Chai. Um, I have two very quick questions. I'll keep them very short. The first one is about the book, um, just a bit of an elaboration on the infomercial. You had a, a long and very rich chapter in the Kai's and Tanabe edited volume, so presumably it builds on that, so roughly how and in what direction. Um, and the other one is kind of trying to marry together everything that I'm hearing. And I'm wondering if you're um, optimistic or pessimistic about the place of a skeptic in a university in Thailand or elsewhere in Southeast Asia. Two other questions? Now's your chance. Sure, good, Matt. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask about the, the, the writing of history, both as a personal process and just maybe more philosophically. And I'm wondering about how, what is the role of like, collegiality and sharing? Because um, I'm, I'm for me, and personally, there's always a tension of wanting to do things by myself and just getting, you know, doing my own thing and also trying to learn from other people but not learn too much from other people. So I was wondering if you could um, talk a little bit about that. One more? Okay, we'll just leave it at those two then. Uh, to answer Matt first, I'm one of the person who have, have bad habit. I don't share much of my draft, partly because I finished draft on the deadline. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to share. But partly because my English normally end up a kind of not in the good condition yet. I keep revising, 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 and send the editor to, to, to work on it. One more reason. I'm not sure this is right or not. Maybe, maybe it's wrong, but it become a habit. I don't share much. This is the kind of rare opportunity. I don't talk much about what I did. And to share the writing is maybe too much for me. I don't have Facebook. I don't care Facebook. Because I don't understand why people need Facebook to talk about themselves. Uh, that, uh, that's what I mean. I, I'm not sure it's right. I, I don't care because I'm a bit, a bit not shy. I'm, I'm scared of exposing, of letting people know too much. Which intentionally or let's say consciously, I don't mind. I can talk. But more like subconsciously, automatically, I don't think about it. I don't think about sharing. I don't think about let people know. When I did, I, again, I don't mind doing that. So I did, I do it mostly by talking. Yeah, I talk to a lot of people what I did in the sense of academic work. What this point, that point. And in fact, I, I, I told my students, talk a lot, please. Because 
talking a lot to your friends beyond your discipline forced you to articulate what in your mind. It's the same as people don't have full scholarship, tend to work better in a way or not as, as not worse than people who get full scholarship because they are forced to write a proposal every year, every half year. I'm not joking. That's the way I can see the development of my students. People who struggle a bit, they was forced to articulate. They was forced to bring in those that, wow, I see that development. For a lot of people, I'm not sure for you, but that's why, it, and this is outside story, I mean footnote. NUS, about 10 years ago, I came here to talk, to discuss about, to that mean, about how to develop the whatever, I mean, graduate programs. The whole committee, three people we told administrators, takes time, there is no shortcut. Because one factor of good graduate programs is scale. <laughs> it's the size. It's the environment that create natural environment that people talk to one another, especially beyond the disciplines. Because people in my discipline are so small, I have seen them for too many times a week, I hate them. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk with somebody else. That kind of environment, by natural growth, the U.S. is good on that way. Apprenticeship has a short, has a downside. Coursework has a downside. But the upside of coursework is create an environment that you contact with people, you share with people. I told my students, you have the opportunity. Present your work, present your point, even a paper to your friend very often. Keep talking, keep talking, keep talking. Partly because that's me. I keep talking to my friends rather than sharing my, my writing. So I would, I would not have a magic formula which is right, but I would say that if you take the sharing thing, get comments as a standard that should do, I have to say that I'm guilty, I'm not good at that. But I think in the end, sharing or forcing yourself to, to discuss, to exchange with other people, that's how your brain cells grow. And graduate programs everywhere need size because it's helpful to do that way. But you can't force people. You have to create an environment that, that it happens naturally. <clears throat> Optimism, pessimism about university in Thailand. I think overall in Asia it's better. I have to say, Singapore, a lot of, of course. I mean, I have visited here many times. I spent to years here, 10 years ago, I spent six months here, five years ago. Every time I got uh, people who asked me experience of Wisconsin or American place, so blah, 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 because here they did things kind of weird, they did things not quite right. I heard of that, but let's say the big picture, I have to say that it's impressive. Impressive. Korea is impressive. Japan turned out to be the old world. I mean, at just huh. Japan is, 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 is having difficulties to, to internationalize. Uh, I used to think, I still believe that because of language, it's not English. Singapore is just easier because it's in English. But South Korea showed that it doesn't have to be English. That kind of thing. So again, this is the thing that I observe. My hobby, serious hobby, I like, I like looking at this, but still not a serious research that I want to, I can address uh, more systematically or to the point. So I'm pretty optimistic. On the other hand, uh, I don't think Thailand is an exception in terms of no optimism. I, I don't know other countries much, but I believe, for example, for brief encounters, many times, but briefly, Indonesia, is, I don't know. Every time people complain about Thai education, I keep telling them, at least better than Indonesia. <laughs> I'm not sure that's a good evaluation, but uh, that the point is here is that not just Thailand, uh, a, a few places still a long way to go. Not just long way, I'm not even sure it's the right direction yet. Uh, NUS, we may have 
reservation, controversy about Yale and U.S., for example. All kinds of reservations. But one thing is, intention is good. They want to infuse, they want to re-energize liberal arts, right? Because liberal arts in the old colonial university everywhere. Liberal arts, liberal arts means <laughs> kind of, I mean, not division in the humanities into division into departments too much. Because liberal arts are supposed to learn together. You can have major, but liberal arts, liberal arts. Not just history, not just philosophy or literature separately too much. Liberal arts, humanities is one world. This, this is what I think. This is, how, this is how I grew up. I was lucky that my, the process I explained a moment um, earlier, it brings me up to become a kind of I'm historian, but at the same time, I don't deny anthropology, literature, philosophy. I read them all, and I kind of, the only thing that I keep talking is that art is a bit beyond my reach. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm try, I try to, I'm trying to. Liberal art, that environment, I'm not sure the, the pra pragmatic, let's say practical, practical implementation of AJ in US, of curriculum, of those things. What are good, what are bad? I, I, I don't want to go too details. But let's say it, it's correct. AJ is weak in liberal arts in that sense. That's how I, that's how I feel. So as long as Asia wants to keep going, and you still keep going to policy oriented, I know that, RE at least. <laughs> so you keep going that direction. Don't have to minimize or to lower its importance, but let's say have to promote or encourage more on the other side, which is not policy oriented. Recognize the importance of language based knowledge. That's how I call humanities, language based knowledge that cannot be achieved by objectivity, by deductionism method. It's our interpretive method based on language and culture. If the or whatever administrators say that uh, uh, humanity is not scientific, in an ideal world, I would say yes, <laughs> correct. And it's good that it's not based on scientific method. <laughs> it's more interpretive, it's language based, but Human beings need different kind of knowledge. Of, of course, we didn't live in the ideal world. The part that, uh, uh, that I don't I, I disagree with my Wisconsin colleague is right now it's the same you talk about. It. Everywhere have to justify its, their existence by uh, uh, telling what are your I mean, contribution. In humanity, what is uh, the kind of job that your students get what contribution in terms of economic value? I hate that. Because every time we have to justify by how good we are tour guide, how good we can promote tourism, I think it's the wrong way. But only exists in the ideal world that we can say that, hey, our value is in a different kind of knowledge. It's language-based, which means it allows us to understand diversity in the world and different ways of thinking. If you think, administrators, Religion is still important to human's life. Is religious study by deductionism? No, it's all humanities, it's all language-based knowledge. So that's, that's what my argument would be, but let's say who would listen, I'm not sure. Last point, what's the book different from the article in that? You read it and you find that many parts are here and there from that article into the book. I would say basically uh, two, three main uh, component. One, I finished almost a whole book, one, one, one page, 100 page on the right wing. It's in there, but it's shorter. It's about 20 pages. What else? Uh, the background about politics and who involved, who did what. I didn't write much in Thai Partly because Thai people know, partly because you can't. <laughs> you can't. I put it in English. I put it in English. Early steps of the, of the silence between 1978 to 1996. I put two chapters in there. 
Part of the reason why the book takes too, took too much time because by 2000, about after 2006, cool. After the incident, I saw my friends, many of my friends, turn to become royalists. I stopped. Because if there was, if that incident, that phenomenon did not occur, I would have finished a book in certain ways. But by that time, I realized, no, the book will be outdated tomorrow if I finish. So I wait. I came to Ari in 2010, partly because I want to go back to transformation to modernity, because mm -hmm. I suspend my book, mm -hmm. because I want to see its ending. Sorry to say this, I saw its ending after the killing in 2010. I kind of, not ending of CTS, ending of my book. I saw the ending of my book after 2010, and after that, it's so itchy. I didn't have time to finish it. That's why only five years later, I have time to think, reconceptualize in 2015. And after that, after the whole outline was done, the whole thing lay out, it's become irritating to, to do the normal work. And if That's I might. why I quit. So those are different between the article and the book. If I might add, he, uh, Professor Tung Chai will be presenting about his book tomorrow at uh, Yale NUS around 12 at the Saga School or Saga Building. I'm not sure where that is. Um, so uh, please look out if you're, if you're come, coming for part two. Can I say, very yeah. brief, when I wrote that article, I'm still I shouldn't say optimistic, but I use that word. I'm so optimistic that, that there is a possibility that the massacre would be revived, investigated. When I finished a book, I didn't see any more. But I wouldn't say that regret in the sense of sadness. No, I think I understand why. Please join me in thanking Professor Winnichiko. And thank you very much for joining us. We hope this is the first of several uh, talks. So we hope to see you soon. Um, stay in touch with us. Thanks.